Okay, today we're going to build a Loki Research I-210 Red in a 38-480 motor. Uh, hopefully this goes smoothly. This is the first take. Uh, also, we're going to hopefully answer a few questions that a few customers have had about uh, how to properly assemble the Ford delay element into the Ford closure. So, we've got all the parts and pieces laid out. I've got a used uh, EX case. It's a 38480. Um, no sense dirtying up a brand new piece of hardware here. Same for the bulkhead and the nozzle. The nozzle is actually a number 16. It's etched in the side. Uh, I don't have a used 19 on hand at the moment, so we're just going to use a number 16. But if you look on the instruction sheets, there's a column here that lists the motor reload, and it has the nozzle size. It lists it with a number, number 19, and then a point two nine seven inches. Number 16 for the H90, and a number 22 for the J320. So every instruction sheet is going to show you which nozzle goes into that particular motor's reload. And then again, the nozzle's got that number engraved on the side for easy identification. Then we've also got the total impulse, the loaded motor weight, the propellant weight, and then the delay times. The delay times up at the top, you can't see this in the camera, but it's listed as XS for extra short, S for short, M for medium, L for long, XL for extra long. And then it lists the amount of time of delay after the motor burns out. In this case, a short delay would be a five second delay after motor burnout. And then that can be adjusted with the, uh, the DAT tool. It's basically a CTI DAT tool with a different sticker on it. Um, and then that would list it as XS, S, M, L, or XL, depending on the delay time that you want. We also list the case length. Uh, not all Loki hardware has the uh, identification for what that specific case is. So all you need to do is get out a tape measure, measure the length of the case, and just double check it to the case length given on the instruction sheets. The instruction sheets will, uh, that one's a fresh one, <laughs> folded it over right after it got printed. List all the parts that you've got listed in the uh, package here. Gives you a diagram of how the motor is put together. Pretty clearly illustrates everything, points out where everything is. Uh, these are available online if you'd like to read through one before you purchase one. But uh, we won't use these right now, I'll just basically go through it. There's some disclaimers on the back, clean up instructions, and uh, we'll just show you real quickly how this goes together. You've got your liner, which is a linen convolute wound liner, uh, much higher grade than the paper spiral wound craft phenolic liners of. Uh, the previous years of ownership and then uh, our propellant grains these are all 30 grams or less of propellant per bag so we can ship these without a hazmat charge through the United States Postal Service using post select it does take a bit longer to ship it that way but you save a twenty seven dollars and fifty cent hazmat fee you've got six delay o-rings for your delay grain and then your two primary o-rings some of the motors now on the hotter loads I'm putting silicone o-rings in here for use on the nozzle. The nozzle gets quite hot and it almost glues these Buna N o-rings to the nozzle. So the silicone makes it much easier to clean off. They basically turn to dust once they get so hot and then they wipe right out. In this particular load, uh, you'll still get two of the Buna N black o-rings. So let's begin by opening up our propellant grains. Just cut each bag open here, and uh, take out each one of these. I spent a lot of time and effort getting the new liners and casting tubes properly sized to where everything works right. Uh oh, <laughs> lost that one. Everything works right the first time. These are a fairly snug fit inside the liner. The liner should already come with the edges already sanded so you don't have any burrs that you have to clean off. 
the grain sometimes might have a little burr of paper here so you might take note of that when you put it in the delay just put that in in first and then push it in after putting so many of these in on the longer motors you might find that pushing the grains in gets a little bit harder to do so simply just load in half from one end and then half from the other end And again, by bagging these individually, that enables us to ship this motor without hazmat fees to the United States Postal Service. Got all the propellant grains in there now. I'm going to take some Dow Corning 111 grease. I'm going to put just a little bit inside each end of the motor case. On these smaller motors, all you need is a real thin film of grease. It doesn't take a whole lot. You don't need to grease the liner. However, if you do grease the liner, uh, it's got a positive and a negative benefit. The positive is it doesn't tend to burn away the dye on the anodizing. The anodizing will still remain in place, but the dye tends to burn away on the inside of the motor just from the excessive heat. The downside is it makes cleanup a lot, a lot messier because you've got all this grease over everything. But uh, once you've coated the ends of each side of the case with grease, you're going to take your primary O-rings, take a little bit of grease, wipe them over here. Make sure you don't have any debris blowing around if you're assembling this at the field. You don't want to get any pieces of grass or dirt, things like that stuck on them. I tend to just take my thumb and forefinger, help push the o-ring around and then take the other two and pull it across the top and that's put together. Now our six delay o-rings. This is the part that kind of trips up some people. It's one of these things that once you see how to do it the easy way it uh, totally makes sense and you wonder why you never did it that way before. Just smear grease over all six of the o-rings, lay them down on your table, like that. Take your forward closure. Just wipe a little bit of grease, what's left on your fingers. Just wipe that inside. You don't want to get a whole lot. Just coat it with a thin, thin layer of grease. Wipe your fingers off. Grab your delay. And then simply push down on all six of the O rings putting them around there. Now in doing so you might get a little grease on the end of that. That's fine. Leave that end down. Now take your forward closure and simply push it down. Done. If you're really nitpicky you can push this last o-ring in all the way around. It really doesn't need to. Once the motor fires it's going to push them all the way in. You're pretty much done with the delay unless you want to drill it to a shorter length on the instruction sheets here, which is pretty simple. If you've got a, a DAT tool, you just set the top. I should have grabbed one, but I uh, failed to do that, forgot about it. Just set the top to the right delay setting for extra short, short, medium, long, or extra long. Put the delay in there, and then simply twist it down on the drill bit. Do make sure that the DAT tool you have has the drill bit extending from the base 0.925 inches. There's still some floating around that were made longer than that. If you drill it out longer, you're going to shorten your delay time. And in a worst case scenario, you could have a motor that has an extra short delay. You could drill it all the way to that shortest setting and still take out too much, which can cause a premature ejection and a forward closure failure. Basically, the delay burns out before the motor's done burning because the drill length is too long. Obviously, that would be a bad thing. Now that you've got that done, all the O-rings are installed, put the liner in the back, put the nozzle in the back there, put the forward closure in here. Uh, I forgot to grab the nozzle washer and the snap rings, but basically just drop your nozzle washer in the back, install the snap ring. Let me grab two of those real quick. I'll be right back. I've only got one snap ring here, but I'll show you how I like to put these in. Everybody talks about a sharp edge and a round edge. 
They all say to put the sharp edge out. I agree with that, but I agree for a different reason. In my experience, drop your nozzle washer in. When you grab a hold of these with a sharp edge, my pliers anyway tend to grab a hold of them a lot better. I simply hold the eyes of the earring over the ends of the case, take the tip of the pliers, put them down to where they're flush, compress it, keeping your fingers around it, and release. And it's pretty easy that way. Just make sure that you do keep them covered at all times, just an off chance the snap ring flies off. You don't want to get hit in the forehead, it hurts. I also have uh, filed my pliers on the end with a little tiny notch groove in there to where it grabs a hold of them a lot better. So again, just grab it, pop it right in. Turn it over, push the bulkhead down. You will notice a little bit of slop in there. That's fine. We've got a big shoulder for the liner, so we can allow for that. But when assembling it, push it down all the way. That way the nozzle, the washer, is pressed up against the snap ring. That way once the motor pressurizes, it doesn't slam the nozzle down, possibly causing damage to it. And then just put your top o-ring, your snap ring in the top. If you're flying with motor ejection, you then pour in the black powder into the top of the delay closure. Take your red plastic cap, put it over the top, and you're good to go. If you're not using a whole lot of black powder because it's a small rocket, these things stay on there pretty good too. Just take a little wad of paper, uh, toilet paper or ejection wadding, put that in the top just to make sure that you keep the black powder down on top of the delay. Also, before you pour in any uh, ejection powder, verify that there is no grease in the small touch hole at the top. If you've installed the delay the way I showed you here, you shouldn't have any on there. It just takes a little thin coating of grease on all the parts here. But that's pretty much it. Got your ejection charge in there, put your cap on the top, you're ready to install the motor inside your rocket, and um, possibly in the future you might also be able to send these and ship them with uh, igniters as well. We're still working on that here. Thank you and if you have any questions uh, just post a question and I'll be glad to answer.